Yes, got it. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. All right, all right, all right. See what we got going on here. I was going to get my highlight, but I can't find it. <laughs> it's all right. We're going to give people a few moments to realize and recognize that we are online. Okay, I'm going to run this way then. Go ahead, do what you have to do. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my goodness. Oh, Lord. Real life live. Yes. <laughs> Anybody that's already out there, welcome, welcome. Welcome, welcome. Oh, Jesus. Everything up. Mm hmm. Mm-hmm. Let me see. Let me get it together, people. Pay for those that are coming on. Oh, this where it's at. Hey, Trita. Hey, Nita. Hey y'all. Thank you for tuning in. Hi. <laughs> How's she saying hi? Is she not even in her seat? <laughs> oh, that was the other one. There it was. There we go. I'm working on two screens, everybody. So we're gonna make it work. Mm-hmm. But we thank you for joining us this evening. So we're going to go ahead and get started. So hello, everyone, and welcome to Deborah and Dana Presents Live. We thank you so much for taking the time out of your evening to watch us. Uh, I am Dana Latrice Speaks Ransom. There is my sister, Deborah, number one drama queen, Bendy. And it is with the greatest pleasure. Yes. <laughs> that I introduce to you all our very special guest that we have with us today. She is a powerhouse my little firecracker. She is a preacher, a teacher, an encourager, an evangelist. And yes. All, all in all, awesome, awesome woman of God. Amen. So, not to mention she is the greatest mother in love ever. <laughs> Please show some love and put some claps in the comments for Dr. Prophetess Edna Ransom from Make a Way and Deliverance for Gospel Baptist Church in Urbana, Virginia. <laughs> oh, that's a mouthful. That was a mouthful right there. Oh, I'm going to do that off the top of my head. That is a lot, okay? <laughs> all in bad title. But it's all right, though. To God be the glory for it all. To God be the glory. Yes. yes. Now, if there are any of you that was with us when we did our first live show a couple of months ago, then you know that before we start and do anything that we're going to pray and we're going to have God ordained and be in the midst of this. So mm -hmm. without further ado, 
let us look to the Lord. Father God, it's in the name of Jesus. Yes. That your children, your daughters are gathered here tonight, Lord God, to do the work that you've placed in us to do, Father. Yes. yes. We are just Jesus. asking that you decrease us so that you get yes. increase, right. Lord God. We're asking that you yes. just be in the midst and you move as you see fit. Father. Yes, have your we're way, Lord God. That you just touch each and every person that is yes. under the sound of my voice, Lord God. I pray for every marriage that's on this line, yes. Lord God. Yes. I every individual that may be struggling in their relationship right now i even pray for the single people that are listening lord god yeah. Yeah. You have to realize that things do happen in marriages lord but if we just keep you first and keep you in the midst of it lord god that you are faithful and just to help us through it all lord so we are just asking that you move we're asking that you have your way holy spirit speak through each and every one of us lord god and we pray that life Lives yeah. are changed and people are set free, Father. We thank you, we love you, and we give your name the praise, the glory, and the honor. In Jesus' yeah. name, we pray and we give thanks. Amen. Thank Amen. 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 Yes. Praise yes. God. Okay. So again, we welcome you to Deborah and Dana Presents Live. The purpose of the show today is to dive deep and to discuss the first episode from our new series scenes from life which was titled father forgive them for they know not what they are doing which is dealing with a broken marriage due to adultery so if you haven't listened to the episode yet um please know that there will be spoilers throughout <laughs> this live but we still encourage you to go and listen once it is over because it is very powerful. It's only 10 minutes, so it's not going to take up a lot of your time. But those 10 minutes are very, very powerful in our same. Amen. Okay. So you can find that episode right here on Facebook at Deborah and Dana Presents Podcast. You can also find it on Apple Podcasts, Amazon Music, Spotify, YouTube, all that good stuff. Just look for Deborah and Dana Presents, okay? And you can see all of our other episodes and seasons and things that we have done. All right. Whoop, whoop. All okay, right. ladies. So let's get into it. Okay. Yeah, we about to get into it. And those of you that are mm -hmm. watching, feel free to jump in those comments and say what it is that you want to say, because we definitely want to hear from you, okay? Okay. Okay, Deja showing you some love. She said, whoop, whoop, that's my grandma. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so um, I'll start by saying that this episode, has sparked um, a lot of phone calls, <laughs> a lot of text messages, mm -hmm. and on-site conversations um, from both men and women. There yeah. are a lot of people that are dealing with this very subject right now or have dealt with mm -hmm. it in their past. And I've even had people that stated that, you know, they wanted to change up how they do things in their relationship so they won't end up in this type of situation. So I'm giving it all to God and thank him yes. for it. So it, it lets us know that people are affected and they're listening and people are going through. Mm -hmm. So whatever the situation the episode has stirred up some emotions, okay? <laughs> that he yes. has discussed yes. tonight. <laughs> Definitely. So um, for those of you that don't know, Deborah took the seven last utterances of Jesus Christ on the cross and created seven different monologues about things that happen in life. Hence mm -hmm. why the new series is called Scenes from Life. There are things that happen. 
Um, with that being yeah. said, my first question is going to be for you, Debbie. Uh, the first yeah. utterance is Father, forgive them for they know not what they are doing. And please forgive Titan in the background, y'all. <laughs> Yeah, his dad <laughs> door. So, that's okay look titan says he's supporting the ladies tonight yes indeed yeah. indeed so but <laughs> as i stated the first utterance is father forgive them for they know not what they are doing and i want to know why did you choose the story of adultery for this particular utterance hmm very good question dana well, you know, I try to. <laughs> well, actually, I gave a lot of thought to what, why God or why Jesus said that from the cross and what must have been going through his mind, his spirit as he uttered those words on our behalf. I mean, we have to stop and think about the fact that he left his home in glory out of love for us to secure our salvation. And yet he was, you know, rejected. He was ridiculed. Yeah. He was betrayed. Mm -hmm. He was beaten and he was crucified. Mm -hmm. But even with that, he understood the assignment. So as his life was slowly slipping away, he had enough love for us to still ask for forgiveness on our behalf, to still act on our behalf. Mm -hmm. And so as I thought about it, I you know, asked myself what modern day situation could occur where a person would give of themselves out of love and feel like they were being rejected like they were being betrayed, um, being, you know, beaten down mentally, being crucified spiritually. And as I prayed about it, God put into my spirit a broken marriage. And that's really how it came about. Amen. Amen. Powerful indeed. And, you know, there, there are a lot of people that whether they know it or not. I had a conversation earlier and there's someone that is going through what the story portrayed and mm -hmm. was blindsided. Didn't know that their, their spouse was feeling this way. I mean, and I was reading up on it and it was saying, um, according to Couples Therapy Inc., Infidelity accounts for 20 to 40 percent of American divorces. Mm -hmm. And that's crazy in itself. But before we get into all of the statistics and that, Ma, this question is for you. I wanted to know what did you think about this first episode when you listened to it? Well, it hit home. <laughs> it was um, very well brought out that you could see and understand both the woman's point of view and the man's point of view because mm -hmm. when you stand before the Lord and you make a vow first thing we need to know we don't make a vow just to each other but you're mm -hmm. making that vow for the Lord and so if you you are inviting him into your marriage and when you make that vow then you have to be uh, 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 true to your mate as well as to God. And when you break that vow with the mate, you are breaking that vow with the Lord. Mm -hmm. So a lot of people don't know that when they come together. God knows I didn't know it. I just wanted to get married. <laughs> yeah. You know? yes, yeah. Most people do. Yeah. They don't yeah. take into consideration that if you are a Christian, if you are a God-fearing couple, you are making a covenant with God. The, the yes. wife and the husband are making a covenant with God. So it's not just about the two of you, you know. Exactly. exactly. Because as you know, in um, Genesis um, chapter three, 
God saw that Adam needed a mate. Everything mm -hmm. else had, but Adam didn't. So he said, well, you know, I'm going to make a woman for him. And, and that's what he did. Y'all know the story how he mm -hmm. caused Adam to sleep and he took out his rib and he formed a woman. And so this is the vow that uh, they made between each other, but in the presence of the Lord, because they had not yet had an encounter. Had a encounter. Mm -hmm. Amen? Amen. So, that they didn't know, so God made them. And so that God said, like y'all can find it in, in um, Genesis chapter three. And it says, Adam said, this is now bone of my bone and flesh of my flesh. Glory to God. He shall be, she shall be called woman because she was taken out a man. This is how God wanted to be. Therefore right. shall man leave his father and his mother and shall cleave unto his wife. His wife, his wife, not Tom's wife, not Jane's wife, not John's wife, but his wife. You see Amen. what I'm saying? Yes. <laughs> and Amen. They shall and they shall be what? One flesh. Mm -hmm. So when when you take that vow before the Lord, then you are committing to God, you're committed to your husband, and, and your husband is committed to you. Now, everything's not gonna be, you know, peaches and roses and all that good stuff every day mm -hmm. because you're gonna have conflicts in a marriage. You're gonna have situations in a marriage and stuff. But then you gotta go back to the word, right? Mm -hmm. Oh, that's my husband. God said, that's my husband. Oh, that's my wife. We are one. So when you're one, you got to come together. You got to come together and you got to pray and you got to trust God that he's going to work this situation out for you. Okay, like I was telling you. Now, I was uh, going to say, because there, I'm sure that there, there might be people that's like, well, what happened in this story? So again, you need to go and listen to it. Oh. But I'm going to just give you like, uh, you know, a brief little synopsis. The yes. uh, first I want to shout out to our phenomenal voice actress, Danita Ortiz, for doing mm. an outstanding yes. job. Awesome yes, job. she an nailed outstanding it. outstanding job. She, yes. all of the emotion, everything. She, she nailed it. So we thank you for that, Danita. Woo -woo. Um, but uh, her character... She was a wife and she had an affair. She confessed her infidelity to her husband and mm -hmm. asked for forgiveness and a chance for them to work things out. And mm -hmm. I will say that um, some of our men listeners were the main ones that had the issue with... Uh, the asking of the forgiveness mm -hmm. and uh, the man giving in to that forgiveness. And, you know, I'm just mm -hmm. like, why is it? And I don't know whether or not uh, some of those individuals that had the issue are online right now that could speak to it. But it's like, you know, I'm like, this happens, unfortunately, more often than it should. Mm -hmm. It shouldn't be happening. Once you take those vows, it's supposed to be you and that person, period. But mm -hmm. it happens. So, but it seems like with men, they have a, a harder time to accept a woman stepping out, but it's always a, I'm not going to say always, but people assume that a woman is just going to forgive for the sake of the family and mm -hmm. just get over it. So, mm -hmm. uh, you know, it's just, it's been amazing listening to some of my, you know, the men folk that listen to the podcast and, mm -hmm. and share their feelings about what is what. I'm trying to yeah. see. But that's really. <laughs> Wait a minute. Uh -oh. uh, okay. uh, Brother Ha says he don't, he didn't have issues. He had subscriptions. <laughs> <laughs> oh, so, um, well, I hope Tom, <laughs> that you put those, that whole subscription into the comments so that we know exactly what's your issue. What, yeah, what your subscription is, Hoss. What's yeah, going on? 
Uh, Devana said, because the narrative is that it's just the nature of men and we're supposed to accept that and it's bogus. That's mm -hmm. me. True, very true. That's true. Very that true. Mm -hmm. But I want to know, um, Ma, what are your thoughts or what do you think that the root cause of infidelity is? What is the root cause? Sin. Mm -hmm. it's, it's as simple as that because before sin came into the world, Adam and Eve didn't know nothing about having an affair with someone else. Mm -hmm. Even though they were the only two. It wasn't in their spirit. It wasn't in their soul. It wasn't in their mind. But the enemy came in and when he tricked them on one thing, guess what? He tricked them on everything. So sin came into the world, into the world by the devil himself. And it's left up to you. What are you going to believe? Or what you're not going to believe? My problem was with Adam, Adam and Eve was the fact that they knew the voice of God. For however long it was before the devil tempted her. And they knew his voice. They knew he was good. He walked with them every day. He talked with them. He provided everything for them. But when the enemy came in, he made what he could give them sound better, look better, and taste better than what God could give them. And so that's that's where it came in. One sin, one sin is the, is is the opening door to all sin. And that was mm -hmm. the first that opened the door to everything. And so where does it come from? It comes from the enemy. Mm -hmm. One moment is not enough for you. Mm -hmm. Go ahead, nobody's gonna know. Mm -hmm. Sneak out, it's all right, you know. One man's not good enough for you. You know, you're too much of a woman for that one man. Go on, go on out there. Mm -hmm. Nobody's gonna know, you, you know what I'm saying? And so with that, People have a tendency to listen with their minds instead of with their spirit. If you are a Christian, you know, and your spouse is a Christian, then the two of you can work it out with the help of God. Mm -hmm. But if if one is a Christian and the other is not, then they're not going to want to hear what you what the Christian person has to say because they're looking at it in the natural. They're looking at it in the flesh. Mm -hmm. My feelings was hurt. My 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 name is hurt you know everybody's gonna look at me now funny different and all this stuff. you went through that yes why not but when you are saved and you you have a relationship with the lord you know that god is greater than any sin that the enemy can throw your way so what's the key having faith mm -hmm. having faith in god and trusting him to get you out of the situation you have to pray it's not yeah. easy it's not easy. So you have to pray. Sometimes you have to be in your room, in your house, in your room by yourself, and you just cry unto the Lord until the Lord answers you. But I'm a living witness to let you know that God will bring you out of this. Because what? It's not good to you. It's not good for you. You didn't ask it, and God didn't give it to you. So mm -hmm. that's, why, that's why Satan got kicked out of heaven, because he wanted to be like God, right? So he couldn't be like God, so he comes to the earth. And then he tries to take over, and he, he tries to in, 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 intrude the man and woman with these ungodly feelings that's not of God for the opposite sex, even though they already have a wife or a woman. A okay. wife or a man, I'm sorry. A wife or a man. They already have one, but that's not yeah. enough. And sometimes... And, and, oh, I'm sorry. I want to get in because it's like the comments are popping off. So I'm, <laughs> I'm trying, I'm sorry, y'all. I'm trying to listen. I'm trying to look at y'all comments. It's it's a lot going on. Um let me see. Uh Trita, she said she agrees that sin is the root, but to go a bit deeper, sin invited selfishness, deceit, and lust. Those are the sins the doctor is speaking of, talking about you. Mm -hmm. uh, Paul said that his subscriptions are 
<laughs> cheating is wrong for both men and women. First things first, you broke your vow to that person and before God. Secondly, mm -hmm. medically and biologically speaking, cheating is nasty. Since mm -hmm. uh, let's be real about it. When folks cheat, I doubt yeah. very seriously I if they use protection. protection. So you are bringing whoever you cheated with germs and mm -hmm. stuff. Mm -hmm. That's right. Yeah, and, they right. slept with, and whoever they slept with and so on lastly forgiveness is one thing staying with that person is totally different so Ooh. true that's that's a mouthful there but it is so true okay. yes and everything that he has said the subscriptions he has said is so true mm -hmm. you know and, it, and like he said <laughs> When you, when you decide that you want to step out on your wife or you want to step out on your husband, you don't know the last person. That person that you're sleeping with now, you ain't sleeping with and you, you having a sexual relationship with, you don't know who they was just with. Mm -hmm. you, know, you know? And that's how diseases and all that stuff come in. That's how different personalities come into the person, come into your spouse. And now she done changed or he done changed. And you're like, I don't know why he changed. He, he didn't used to be like that. What did you put in him? What did she put in you? Mm -hmm. We were never taught, you know, in my time coming up, you were not talking about that <laughs> at all. That was not a, a topic of discussion. You had to learn as you go. Mm -hmm. Nowadays, yep, nowadays, there's so much information that you can find out about everything, every topic. And nowadays, we need to teach our youth that you can't go around sleeping with everybody. My mama used to tell me, she was my lady. My mama used to tell me, no, you're not going out with it. No, you're not going out with every Tom, Dick, and Harry. Mm -hmm. I didn't know what she meant. I just thought she didn't want me to have no boyfriend. <laughs> but it wasn't that. <laughs> she she knew. And that she explained to me the best that she could, you know, that you need to keep yourself for your husband. Mm -hmm. And that's what I did. And that's what I did. And so... When, when, when your spouse cheats on you and you go through these things and then there's a change in you and, and the, the spouse is wondering why you're acting like that, you need to think about where you was the night before, baby. Mm -hmm. That's true. Because I do believe that coming together with someone outside of your marriage, you're bringing all of that energy into, you know, the home, you're bringing all of that energy back into the marital bed. So there's always going to be confusion. And, and the sad thing about it is most of the time when a person gets to that point where they're contemplating stepping out, they don't seek God. They don't go to their mate and say, hey, we need to talk because I'm thinking some things that I know I should not be. I mean, mm -hmm. think about how many marriages could be saved if people are just honest and open mm -hmm. about what they're feeling and going through. And also, you know, a husband and a wife, you need to do those check-ins with one another. You know, mm -hmm. you need to talk on a regular basis. You need to be praying together on a regular basis. Because yeah. I truly believe that if you keep God in the center in the center of your marriage, if you're both seeking him together and in your own private prayer time, a lot of the stuff that leads a person to want to step outside of their marriage wouldn't mm -hmm. even be a factor. Correct. Yeah. Um, before we carry on, again, I'm trying to read uh, <laughs> some of these comments. Um, Okay, wait a second. April said it's harder to stay than to walk away. Uh, they, they stated cheating is selfish. I believe mm. women tend to cheat emotionally while men cheat physically. And that's mm -hmm. good. Okay. Gonna talk, yeah, we're going to talk about that. We gonna, we're we're definitely going to talk about that right there. Mm -hmm. 
going to read a couple of these comments before I get to so hold the line on that one day because we're going to get to that one. Uh, ha said, then the most insulting part when they say I didn't mean to or it was not. Uh, let's see here. Trying to get people. April said, being friends in a marriage is important. Important. Lots of people never learn to be friends. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, so yeah, they're coming. But getting back to what they said, because that was actually my next uh, segue. So thank you for that, Dave, because you hear that quite often. That. Mm -hmm. Some people use it to justify what it is that they've done or what have you. But mm -hmm. I've heard people say that an emotional affair is way worse than yep. a physical affair. And I want to yep. know, is there, and all of you that are commenting on live, you can put your answer there as well. But I want to know, is there really a difference between the two? I think they're both, personally, I think they're both equally bad. Mm -hmm. I understand the sentiment about being emotionally involved is worse than the physical. I get why people feel that way and say that because the physical sometimes can just be that. It's just physical. I like what I see, it's available. I'm in hook up with it and that's that. Emotional, you know, you're giving your heart to someone, you're considering their emotions and feelings and, you know, that goes deep. That can really run deep. Mm -hmm. Mom? That is, that is a true statement. And this is what I was going to say is that the emotional affects, it affects your mind, you know, mm -hmm. somebody can tell you how much they love you and how much they appreciate you and you're beautiful and hearing things that they never heard from their spouse, okay? Maybe their spouse used to tell them that before they got married and then after they got married, it died off. And mm -hmm. now he's telling it to the, 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 the woman right or the woman is telling it to the man my husband used to treat me this way he used to, and then he comes up and he treats you the way that, you said that your husband used to treat you and he's not doing that no more so now you're an emotional attached to what that person is saying but that person only wants you for what they can get out of you mm -hmm. so that's why emotional uh uh uh, uh is more affair is more dangerous than a physical because your mind will constantly be on that person he mm -hmm. might be off with somebody else and and not thinking about you anymore because he got what he want from you so yeah yeah therefore he's gone off to the next one and you still on him that's why you got what you call those people that's seeking you out they seek you they track you down they go after you They're oh stalkers stalkers mm -hmm. after you always wherever he go there she is wherever he go there she is why because the things that he told her mm -hmm. were emotional. it affected her mind and her heart but physical is one night thing that's good see you later you know and they don't care that's mm -hmm. the physical or they could be with you for months weeks and years and then they'll drop you because mm -hmm. They have enough of you. They, they know how you are. So they're going on to move on to somebody else. Both of them, like you said, um, it, it is terrible either way around. It's, it's hard. It's hard. But the enemy can mess with your mind. You know, it causes you to think all these things. Well, he doesn't love you anyway, because if he did, he wouldn't have never cheated on you and all this. Stuff. And then you, what happens? Somebody end up getting hurt somebody end up getting killed mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. just just because of that you know so yeah. we have to be careful if that's the way you want to live then you know you shouldn't involve you shouldn't have never got married you shouldn't involve your spouse if you don't think one woman is enough I, I i i was watching a show the other day it's a true story 
and the woman wanted to be with her husband, but he couldn't help but to be with other women. It's a, it's a just story. And so the just said, well, well, are you willing to give up the, that lifestyle and just be with your wife? He said, no. So no, what is he that? could help. He just didn't <laughs> want to. <laughs> That's what I said. He couldn't yeah. help but um, be with so. other women. Really? Yeah, and he could, but like you said, he didn't want to because mm -hmm. of that. You got to know it's a called a lust spirit. Mm -hmm. And it's that lust, that sexual lust spirit yes. that's in him. Mm -hmm. So if you're a Christian, yes, did you say no, something? No, go like, ahead, finish, finish that. If you're a Christian, then you need to go to your leadership and tell them you need help. This is a problem you're going through. You don't like it, but you can't help doing what you're doing. I need deliverance. If you're a Christian and you've been taught the word of God and you know the word of God, then it's, it's no harm in going to your pastor, your pastors or whoever's over you and telling them that you're struggling in this area and you need deliverance. Mm -hmm. That's the answer right. for the Christian folks. There's a couple of things that I, I want to say right now. <laughs> um, a couple of things before I get to the comments, because... The, I can't keep up, y'all. <laughs> and I'm sure there's going to have to be a part two or something yes. because y'all are y'all killing it in these comments. But I I would say that, like I said, okay, because I got ten thousand thoughts because you unhit on a whole lot, and I'm mm -hmm. just like, <laughs> but before you even get with an individual. You take your time to get to know that person, know their tendencies and all of those things. And I know sometimes as we, we've heard, or at least I know I've heard, you know, when you're dating, you know, in the beginning, of course, everything is cute. Everything is fun mm -hmm. because they unsent their representative and then mm -hmm. further in it. And when your heart is now involved, then people start showing you their real selves. Yeah. It, for the story that you were talking about with the person that stated, you know, that stated that they couldn't give that up. Now, I wonder how things were previously when they were dating, because I'm like, my thing is like, sometimes the same way you meet a person is the same way you going to leave a person, you know? So I'm like, if you met that person and they were, a, a ladies man what makes you think that marriage is going to change them change. that person and, and that's a mindset that people have too it's like yeah you know well he was out here with this girl and that girl but he gave me the ring or you know whatever and then you thinking that things are going to be different and it's it, because it, he's the same person he gave you a yeah. ring but there's nothing that changed his mentality, his behavior. You can't change until you come before the king. You know, yes. if you ain't been before him, and you're the he, same, you have to you're the same to broken person. Yes, and if you don't desire to change, if you don't want it, then it's not going to happen. Mm -hmm. And for an individual that decides to go along anyway, and marry a person that they already know has those tendencies, then it's like, well, you pretty much knew what you were getting yourself into when you went down that path with yeah. them. Mm -hmm. And there's a also, lot of that that takes place. Yes, and also they may not know, you see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. They may not know that he's a womanizer. Or she's, or she loves to run men. They may not know it because they are not married, so they may not live in the same state, or they may not live in the same community. But mm -hmm. they're dating. So he comes and dates you on Friday and Saturday. And what he got? Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> to do his own thing, and you don't know it because you're not around him, and if you don't have the same sets of friends. Nobody's there to tell you because his friends don't know you. Her friends don't know you. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, but now and a lot of times friends ain't going to tell. Yeah. yeah. They don't 
Girl, I wish I could give you five. <laughs> That's a good one. Already, we already know that. Very, very much so. Mm, but mm, okay, mm. before I, because I, did, I still. And I do this. feel, yeah, wait, yeah. can I want to say too, and Ma, if he's like, as you said, seeing you on Friday and Saturday and then Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, you know, you, mm -hmm. you're trying to figure out what's going on. Well, that should be a indicator okay. right there. Why, why am I only seeing you a couple of days out of the week? Exactly. Why, can why, we, said, why are we like, only talking, you know, during a certain time it's of the right day? right there in your face. Sometimes mm -hmm. we have the, we, I'm not going to say everybody, but you do have people that walk around with the blinders on. It's That's there. what I was They see it. But they're choosing not to because whether it's the biological clock is ticking, whether it's all of their friends are getting married or have been, you know, are already married. Oh, in a relationship. They're and, like, you know, well, mm -hmm. I don't want to be the one, you know, not having somebody. So then they're like, well, this person is here. They're giving me attention. They're doing so. I'm just going to go ahead versus waiting. And that actually steps into our next episode that is coming out that whole loneliness because mm -hmm. you, yes. have to, you have to love yourself and be mm -hmm. content with yourself before you can be good for anybody Nobody else. else. You have some people that decide or choose to look the other way when the signs are there. I'm not speaking about the person that totally, you know, the person just did not show that that was them. I'm talking about those that got them that particular way or mm -hmm. has heard things because nowadays it it was different back in the day you know you didn't have social media where all you got to do is follow them or follow a friend of theirs and catch the pictures and see what they post and what they tweet and what they saying it's That's there and you know the longer you talk to somebody that was something that mama always said she was like you don't have to say nothing just watch mm -hmm. what another person does and that'll mm -hmm. tell you a whole lot about that person so mm -hmm. i mean we have people that are jumping to me jumping into marriage not taking into account what we talked about earlier that it's a it's a relationship not only between that person that you marrying but with god as well you're yeah. taking now yeah. before him so it's a People and you can't be unequally, you can't be unequally yoked either. I mean, that's another factor that leads to destruction. Very much so. Very mm -hmm. much so. But one, one is thinking that it's of the heart and the other one is it's of the mind, the head, you know. The one with the heart is in, is in it for the long run, mm -hmm. but the one that's thinking with the head is just in it for, for a good time. Maybe if he, I've heard people say, oh, well, I get married for a year or two, then I get divorced and I, I just love getting married. That, that is a stupid comment. I don't mean no mm -hmm. harm, but there, there are women that just married because they love to have a wedding. They want the wedding. They I had a childhood wedding. friend that did that. Um, she got got married very young and i mean and she pretty much said that she just wanted to have a wedding mm -hmm, mm -hmm. very beautiful wedding and then her and her husband were um divorced a year later see you gotta be you gotta be very careful in what you want and how you go about doing number one you need to pray about like my beautiful daughter was saying, Dana, it, you know how to pray about this. You know, mm -hmm. I, I do remember that when Dana and Jesse were dating, that she came to me and told me, she didn't have to tell me this. She said, Ma, I made a list of what I want in the man. And she mm -hmm. said, I laid it before the Lord. And I prayed about it. And this is the one he sent me. And he, he's everything that's on that list. See, that's a good example of mm -hmm. what they woman should do for to accomplish get the man that she wants but not that she goes after them god sent her husband to her mm -hmm. he didn't find it for wife find it for good, <laughs> a good thing he, he. that's me not her I ain't but you make your request known to the lord mm -hmm. 
Mm-hmm. Yeah, our, our pastor um, gave, you know, everybody that suggested doing one of his teachings on relationships. Mm-hmm. And he said that, you know, you need to be very specific about, you know, what it is that you want, that you need to go back and update it as you grow and change because your list might grow and change along with it. And I truly believe in that. I think everyone, not just a woman, a man of God can do this as well and and, and write down (laughs) and pray over what it is that he wants in a woman because Mm -hmm. you have to wait on the Lord because a lot of times, as we discussed, you know, a couple of weeks ago when we were, you know, meeting regarding the live show, you know, a lot of us just, you know, marry out of like, oh, I like this person. They treat me well, mm-hmm. you know, they look good mm-hmm. or whatever the case may be. But at the end of the day, a marriage is a ministry. Mm-hmm. It, you know, it's not just about, you know, oh, I'm going to marry this person and we're going to you know, ride off into the sunset and live happily ever, ever after your marriage should mean something. Your marriage should represent something. Your marriage should be a highlight to bring glory to God. So it's not just about, oh, I'm getting married because I love this person. If you're a Christian and you're marrying, your marriage is a ministry. It is. So it should be a light within your community. It should be a light within your family. It should be a light within your church. Yes. It should be a light unto the world. God should be shining through your marriage. Exactly. And I want to say, uh, pause, Trita, day, um, day. All <laughs> of I, I, look. <laughs> everything i feel you i see all of these comments um danita rock i i see y'all i thank you yeah it's a lot i'm gonna end it's up we all have to do uh a, a, another show and just have them on here as well so that they can, <laughs> can speak openly about what it is that they have to say but i truly appreciate your engagement but I, I, there's something else um, because in the episode, the husband, and I don't know exactly how he, how he worded it, but it was what I took from it is that adultery isn't just a, affecting you. Mm-hmm. It's affecting the entire family, not just your spouse who you, who you cheated on. If you have children, it's affecting your children. Yeah. If yeah. you have, you know, family friends that, you know, are close to you all and know what's going on, it's affecting that. And if you yes. all run in the same, you know, friend group, mm-hmm. it affects that, you know, because I've seen that happen where it's like, now you feel as though you got to pick sides because it's like, who do you go with when yes. you know, this type of thing happens but Mm -hmm. I really want to speak on the fact that that person what they did is not just affecting them it affects those around them Mm -hmm. when you when when you get married and if you discuss about having children then that's adding to that marriage. It's not just going to be about you and your spouse anymore. Now you're bringing somebody else into that group. Okay, so now you have a child or you have ch- children. And the Bible says for the father not to provoke the children to wrath. Okay, if the children see the father fussing and fighting and beating up on the mom and running out on her and going with this or that, that's going to that's going to affect the children, mm-hmm. how they would treat their, if it's boys, they're going to think that that's the way that they should treat their girlfriends or wives, you know, mm-hmm. and, and if it's the mother that's doing the running and the cheating and everything and lying and all this and sneaking around her husband, then, and the girls see it, it's going to affect them that, oh, this is the way mama treat me. this is all I know, this is what you do, you know, mm-hmm. and, but you got to come to the parent really needs to come to the point in their lives that we took a vow. Number one, if you are a Christian, when you got married, because Christians do fall, amen? Mm-hmm. 
So when you get that call and you love that person for that moment, for that month, for that year of two or five, however long, and then you decide that uh, it's not what I want it to be, but now you have children. But now you have children in this marriage. So it's gonna affect your children. How are they gonna be treated? And number number two is that it affects how that person that's doing the cheating is gonna treat the children. And then they go out and they might get somebody else pregnant. See what I'm saying? Now, you got half brothers and sisters. Mm -hmm. You done brought this into the marriage. So it's a lot to pray about. There's a lot to trust God for. There's a lot to walk in. But you got to have a made up mind that I'm going to do the best that I can do for my children yeah. and for myself. And I'm trusting God to bring me out of this situation. It's not an easy thing to do. Let me tell you, it's not an easy thing to do, but you can do it. So you got to let, you got to let people know that it ain't about that person because you can get anybody. You see what I'm saying? Any person coming to your life, but you can't get God, any God, only the true and living God. And if you truly love him, then he's more to you than anything or anybody. Yeah. And you got to make it up in your mind that, I'm not going to let the devil steal what God has given me. Mm -hmm. Try to take from me what God has given me. So, you know what, girls? Sometimes you have to fight for your marriage. Mm -hmm. You have to fight for your marriage. You have to fight for your children. You want to bring them up in the ammunition, because the word of the Lord said, bring them up in the ammunition of the Lord. So, number one, you're going to have to repent. You're going to have to repent of that sin. Number two, you're going to have to pray. You must pray. That's what the word says. You must pray in all things. Pray. Pray about Because you know what? You can't solve it. It's not a physical fight. It's a spiritual fight. Mm -hmm. You can see works of the devil in the flesh. I don't care how hard you try. So you got to spiritually Fight the devil by giving God the praise, the glory, and the honor. Thank him for your saved husband. Call that cheating husband a man of valor. Call him a man of worth. You know, if this is what God is putting in your spirit, and I know it's hard, and some of you not going to believe, but it works. <laughs> it works. And so you got to start speaking these things over your spouse. And then you got to speak to my children. My men, my little boys, they're going to grow up to be men of value. They're going to go up, grow up knowing the Lord. Then the mother got to teach them, if that's the one that's not doing the cheating, got to teach them how to be saved, sanctified, Holy Ghost filled men to their wives. Somebody got to teach them. If the man not going to teach them, somebody got to teach them so that they will know to grow up that. Oh, I don't have to live like that because my dad lived like that. Mm -hmm. My mama taught this in the word. Amen. Mm -hmm. And I will, I, I can definitely attest to that. Um, you know, I can attest to that. But there is something that we talked about in our initial meeting that I, I really want us to, uh, to talk about tonight. And in our conversation, we had it had came about that not every marriage is ordained okay. by God. Mm -hmm. I was just sitting here thinking about that. Yeah, I mean, because, you know, we're... And the way in which we're speaking, and yes, you, you, pray, you pray your way through and you have to fight for your marriage if that's what God is placing on you to do and that is your God-intended mate. However... But comma, whatever it is that you want to say, <laughs> not every person, not every marriage is ordained by God. Yeah. So um, we had it on it earlier. I mean, you chose that person yourself. God didn't mm -hmm. choose that person as your mate. You were tired of waiting, you know. So for whatever reason, like you said earlier, you know. 
you know, everybody else is getting married. You know, I'm tired of being alone. I don't want to be that one that doesn't have a mate the next trip we take or, you know, whatever it may be. You know, if God didn't ordain it, then you are ready on the losing end. Exactly. Exactly. And, and that's what happens in a lot of marriages. You know, sometimes one or the other is naive. Okay. And they're seeing it as red, white, and blue. And the other person is seeing it as, you know, black, dim, and dark. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. In the relationship, they, the one that's seen everything also oh, oh wonderful, nothing is wrong in our much pretty much like that. Like uh, the young man that didn't know that his wife was cheating on him in the episode. He didn't mm -hmm. know because he thought everything was going smoothly. Everything was wonderful. It was flowing. Everything was flowing. But that lets you know how long this has been going on. Mm -hmm. And she looks for affection and love and understanding from her husband. She got it when before they got married. She got it when they first got married. And now something has happened. So she doesn't know if he was cheating on her on the, at the job or when he gets off from work. She didn't know what was going on with him. But she decided to do what she wanted to do. She wanted to please the flesh. Mm -hmm. So she went out. And what happened? She had an affair. Mm -hmm. But thanks be to God that she had enough Jesus in her to know that this is not the way that God meant for her to be. So what did she do? She went and confessed that sin. For the word of the Lord said, confess your sins before me. Confess. Mm -hmm. And she confessed her sins and told him, even though he couldn't believe it and he didn't want to believe it and it hurt his heart, you know. But they come to a point that, oh, well, I should have prayed for it. I knew something was wrong. I should have prayed. Like you were saying, Debbie, instead of coming together and communicating, like you say in the marriage, you got to communicate, you got to talk with one another. Mm -hmm. And number two, still date your wife. I hear that a lot now. But when I got married, we don't know. When you got married, that was it. You married. <laughs> but no. <laughs> You still need to change. You know, you got to date that way. I don't care if you've been married 20, 30, 40 years. Have mm -hmm. a date night. Yes, always. I have yes. a, question. I have a, a yes. Trita wanted to know if a marriage is not ordained by God, does he, meaning God, not still bless it because he honors marriage? So if <laughs> marriage is not ordained by God, is he not going to, can he still bless that marriage even though he did not put you two together? Mm -hmm. or that's not the I'm gonna I'm I'm answer it the way that God answers the word in the Bible. He says, I bless who I choose to bless and I curse who I choose mm -hmm. to curse. So it's how you're gonna live in, how you're gonna live in that matter. One of those persons has to know the Lord. You mm -hmm. see what I'm saying? We have so many people nowadays that they will get anybody that got license over the um, internet. They, they, they don't have a church affiliation. Come on. They go, they take the course online and then they get a certificate, say you're a Dane pastor. How do you ordain pastor when you don't know the Lord? Mm -hmm. So we got to be careful about that thing because somebody, you know, I see a lot of it on TV with the, with the so-called movie stars and they, they say, now nah, I'm a dame pastor. I can marry you. You want me to marry you? No, it's, you're not a dame by God. You might be a dame by man, mm -hmm. but you're not a dame by God because if you're a dame by God, you're going to do it God's way. And i seen some of those masses, ma marriages that they don't even have God in the vows. Mm -hmm. so that's why you're not, that's why some marriages are not ordained by God. But the ones that are ordained by God and you pray and you ask God to watch over your mate and your spouse and your children and be in the midst of the marriage because he put you together, then guess what? That's what he's going to do. No matter how hard the devil tries to come after you, 
God got you covered because you're praying to him about your marriage. Mm-hmm. That's what I get out. Come on, girls. Tell me. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I was going to say that, you know, I agree um, with you as far as God can bless, you know, whoever he wants. Just yeah. because he did not ordain the marriage, just because he did not bring the two of you together does not mean, oh, he's just turning his back on you. No, no, you no. Know, no. Because, you know, um, in my previous marriage I yeah I didn't see God we talked about this when we were preparing Mm -hmm. for the show you know Mm -hmm. I didn't see God you know I married for the reasons that I married for but he was not a part of the um equation as far as me choosing my mate or waiting for my mate but even with that God's hand was on me and my children in my household that entire time because I knew him as my Lord and Savior. I knew where my help came from. And so I stayed in constant communication with him. And I shared with you all that it wasn't until I aligned myself in the way that I was supposed to because I was going to counseling Mm -hmm. And, you know, and I was told that regardless of what this man that you chose is doing, you are a woman of God. And so therefore, Mm -hmm. you must be a godly wife. You must set yourself before him the way that God expects you to. And it wasn't until, I mean, and let me tell you, though, I initially I wasn't having and I'm like, I don't want to hear that I'm like why should I be this you know godly wife when you know I'm not having and receiving the things that you know I needed as a wife Mm -hmm. but when I became obedient and I said you know what I have to be the right example in my household I have to be what God is calling me to be so when I did that he released me from the marriage and I was able to walk away with my dignity with my heart intact and 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 move on in life without missing a beat obedience means a lot yes you gave the right answer. You said that you were the godly person. You were the godly woman in the marriage. That's why God blessed that marriage because somebody in that household was seeking him. Somebody in that household was praying. And guess what? He already had ordained you and predestined you before you was even formed in your mother's womb. What he had for you, the plans that he had for you. So yes, we all make mistakes. I made mistakes, you know, my husband made mistakes, all of us make mistakes, but thanks be to God that he had us covered because he had a, 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 a ministry for us to walk in that he wasn't going to let the devil destroy us. Mm-hmm. And I tell you, I'm a stronger, mm-hmm. um, wiser for it. And mm-hmm. um, like I said, I didn't miss a beat. So nice. this is just to me it's important to understand the 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 need of God in a marriage. Yes. It's, and, it's, and it's equally important to be in a marriage that it is ordained by God because it's hard enough to, you know, keep a marriage functioning because we're human. We, we're in the flesh. And I saw where Danielle had made a comment about you might not like each other every day. You know, it takes more than just being, you know, liking. You got to be friends. You have to be, you know, on the same page. You have to be committed, you know, to the task at hand. And and it takes me back to what I said earlier. Marriage is a ministry. It's not about just, you know, like I said, getting married and living happily ever after. Your marriage means something. Your marriage represents something. God should be glorified within your marriage. And a lot of people get married and they don't look at it like that. 
And I think mm-hmm. a lot of that too goes on with that, you know, that whole thing of being equally yoked with the mm-hmm. person. When you are unequally yoked, that's not to say that your marriage can't work, but mm-hmm. it's a heck of a lot harder when <laughs> you are the only God fearing person. You are the only person seeking the Lord and that person don't want to have nothing to do with God or whatever the case may be. You know, when times are hard and when things are going on, you want to have a, whether it's going on between the two of you, going on with your children, going on just in life in general, you know, Mm -hmm. it's important to have that person that you can, you know, your spouse, that you come together, get on your knees together and seek the Lord together. And Mm -hmm. I'm like, and when things are going on in your marriage, and you can't say, come on, let's pray because I don't, I don't like what's happening. Right. You know, and that person doesn't have that relationship, then it's harder. So, you know, people that is like, okay, well, can't I be the one that brings my spouse to Christ and all that? Maybe that's what my job was supposed to be. I can't speak to that. You know, I don't know what God has for you and what he's telling you to do, but I know for me, when I took that time and I sat down with my list and asked those questions, I know how important it was for me to already have a man that had his own personal relationship with God. Not someone mm-hmm. to say, yeah, I know God. I believe in God. Exactly. Okay, that's what a whole mm-hmm. lot of people believe, but don't have that relationship because I'm having older sisters and, you know, people and friends in my life that have had been married and, you know, was living that thing. I saw what my sister went through. I mm-hmm. saw, you know, I, I've seen the situations in other relationships. And I, I know I'm like, you have to have that person that is yoked with you that can seek the same thing. Mm-hmm. And y'all are on one accord with we're giving this and we're surrendering this to God. And if mm-hmm. God's not in the midst, it's it's just harder. It is. It really is. And I just, I'm grateful that, you know, I now am married to a God fearing man that has a personal relationship with the Lord that knows how to pray and cover me and cover us. And like you said, Dana, something's all we need to pray. Come on. We're going to pray about this thing. You know, we're not going to let the devil get a foothold in here. We're going to pray. You know, and and I and that's so important, you know, for the foundation of a marriage to have God in it and to have a a, a husband that knows the Lord personally for himself that can when I'm feeling weak, he's like, we gonna pray. If something going on with one of the children, something going on with one of the you know grandkids, something's going on with whoever you know you know you get that you know phone call okay well we gonna pray come on we gonna pray Mm -hmm. and that's so vital that is so vital you know if you are if you don't if you aren't seeking god and if god isn't first in your marriage then you go out there seeking others you know seeking other then you start letting Uh other people into your marriage and then you know, you, you have to be careful Mm -hmm. with that as well, because you have people that may, you know, might've been even in your wedding party and was like, yay, congratulations, but really don't mean you no good that Mm -hmm. once, you know, secretly wants your relationship to fail. Yeah. Misery loves company. Yeah. Because of the fact that things ain't going right in their life or because of the fact that they can jacked up relationship, whatever Mm -hmm. that thing is. But you thinking that this person is your friend and you're going to that person talking about your husband or talking about your wife. And instead of encouraging you and telling you, nah, y'all need to work that out. Y'all need to seek the Lord. Y'all need to go to counseling, whatever it is. They like, mm, girl, leave him. He ain't no good. Mm-hmm. Or, you know, forget that B. She da 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 da. Exactly. Of- like, so you have to be careful again why it's important to be equally yoked because you're not seeking nobody else but God for that yeah. marriage. And if you do feel that your situation is weighing you down, then you need to have a God 
God-fearing couple that can join you in prayer, not some, you know, oh, I, I got this friend over here or I got this friend over there. You know, you need a God-fearing couple that's, you know, going to cover you and correct you and, and tell you those hard truths versus like what you said, Dana, oh, uh, well, you need to leave him or, you know, man, she ain't no good. You know, there's more out here. Come on, let's hit the club tonight or whatever, you know, because a lot of people don't mean you good. Yeah. And a lot of people don't yeah. even have what it takes to even, you know, offer you counsel. You know, mm -hmm. you want godly counsel, not somebody's, you know, opinion, not mm -hmm. someone's flesh talking to you. You want someone that's going to pray before they open their mouth and then God is going to speak through them and give, uh -uh. give you a word to help your marriage. Yes. yes. Barbara, uh, Barbara Dendy said, that's why you don't talk about your husband with others. Danita said, you can't talk to me about marriage if you ain't married. Exactly. True. True. That's, so that's why I said you need a godly couple. Yeah, Ha said, gotta have friends that will check you. Yeah, people that are, mm -hmm. if you gonna be, I mean, because not to they say- got that you back. You yeah, not to say that you can't talk to family because Ma know, I call her and be like, your son about to make me choke him to he woozy. Yeah, and I said, don't choke him. That, that's, that's my thing, I'm gonna choke him to he woozy. <laughs> But it's, you know, you got to have people and, you know, mom be like, nah, baby, don't choke my big boy to a woozy or whatever. But being able, you know, to have someone that you can talk to and just be able to say things, but you know, number one, that what you say is in confidence. You ain't got to worry about them going all around. Adam's been telling all of your business, but also someone that you know is praying for you all to succeed and not mm. secretly praying for your downfall. And yes. You really, yeah, go ahead, mom. No, I was just going to say, you really has to know the, the person or the couple that you are seeking God advice from just because they're in the church, you know, they're in the church building. We need to get that part uh, straightened up first. Just because you're in a church building doesn't mean you're saved. Just because mm -hmm. you're in a pulpit don't mean you're saved because everybody in the pulpit don't know the real God. Because if they did, they would preach the word of God God has given us to preach. Mm -hmm. um, that's a whole other subject. But I'm well, saying that's that. Another because... live. That's another live. <laughs> yeah, that's going to be another live. <laughs> I say that because I, I've known ministers, no one in my county, no one out here that knows what I'm getting ready to say, ministers that were married, had children, but they stepped out on their wives. So how are you, now this is, this is a good thing that we need to, to try to um, bring forth to the people. How are you going to trust that man when he's in the pulpit and that, you know, you shouldn't do this and you shouldn't fornicate, you shouldn't commit adultery and all this stuff. And then you hear a month down the road, two months down, he done left his wife because he was going with another woman. Mm -hmm. It happens. Mm -hmm. Listen to oh, yeah. so that's why I said, you need to pray. Ask God where to go, who to seek. Mm -hmm. You know, you need to be in a god fan church. Your pastor need to be saved, sanctified, and Holy Ghost rather than he, she, you know, whoever's the pastor, and they have to teach the word of God. Now, if that person decides that they still rather cheat than to be faithful to God and to be faithful to their spouse, then they, they like it, so they're going to do what the flesh like. Mm -hmm. But the word of God said the flesh is subject to the spirit, so you got to be strong enough in your spirit to rebuke the desires of the flesh. Mm -hmm. And you have to know how to cast that thing out of you and off of you because people are looking at you, whether you're in the church or out the church or what, they're looking at you. And I've heard people say many a time, why should I go to that church? He doing the same thing I'm doing. I see him every Friday night in the club. I see him every Friday, every Saturday night in the club. They doing the same thing I'm doing. 
Mm. You see what I'm saying? So mm. sometimes people that are uh, newborn Christians or whatever, they come to the church and they see the same people they are partying with doing the same thing. So they're, they're like, mm -mm, mm -mm. I ain't changing. I'm going to keep Mary, I'm going to keep Jane, and I'm going to keep Sue. Not Jane and Sue. Wait a minute. <laughs> <laughs> you know, <laughs> because if you're going to preach and teach the word of God, you got to live it. There are, that's why there are very few people in the church nowadays because they, they see people in the church building that are not living holy. Mm -hmm. And I've learned that for me, it's simpler and easier for me to live holy than to live the way that I was living before I got married. Amen. Mm -hmm. Amen. It, it, my life is much happier. It's much pleasant. I know the God that I serve. I don't have to listen to what people try to put in my hearing now and think that I got to follow them mm -hmm. and do things that pleases them. And people don't understand, like when my husband and I was going, when my husband and I was going through a situation, people don't ask, why are you staying? Why, how did you stay? Why are you staying? I'm staying because God said to stay. And I'm staying because I love God more than I love anybody, anything. And if God said that he ordained this marriage, then he's going to bring us out. And trust me, he has brought us out full for Some people can't stay because they yeah. don't have. They don't have the connection with the Lord. I think you talked about that earlier, Deb. They don't mm -hmm. have the connection. They don't have the fellowship with the Lord. Their faith is not strong enough to stand on God's word. Sometimes God tests us, you know, and sometimes he will use the events that happen in your life to be an example to others that don't know God. Because mm -hmm. they see you. They know what you've been through. You're the talk of the town. Like, 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 like Sweetie Pie was saying, I'm sorry, Dana was saying, <laughs> like Dana was saying, you know, you in that town, you in that town and everybody know you, they know you've been there, but nobody's sharing it with you. And you're the only dumb one there that don't know what's going on. Mm -hmm. And they look at you and they talk, smile in your face and they're talking about you behind your back, you know. Oh, I know she know why she coming. You know, people do that. Mm -hmm. But you got to be strong and you got to seek the Lord and the Lord will show you and he'll bring you out of it if you both desire. I mm -hmm. think that was in, in your story that at the end, they both had to come together and pray and desire to yeah. be together. Because that's the only way it's going to work. Yes. Yes. That's the only way. So, hey, the devil's still a loser, no matter how hard he tries. And know that he's only coming after saved ones because he already got the ones that's unsaved. Mm -hmm. So he don't want you to succeed in your marriage because you succeed in your marriage, then you're going to succeed in your ministry. And if you succeed in your ministry, you're going to succeed in getting those that you used to run with, huh? That belong to the devil. You're going to get them by telling them how good God is. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Talking about that testimony. Yes. He could do it for me. He can do it for you. That's right. That's right. So nothing is impossible or too hard for God. Right? Amen. Right. <laughs> uh, let's see here. Okay. Yeah, I can't with y'all. I can't keep up. I'm trying to try. <laughs> I know Danita just said, I thank God I have a godly circle that I can go to without judgment. They'll tell me when I'm not right and not what I want to hear. Yes, indeed. Mm -hmm. Yes, indeed. That is. Yes. Have the people that hold you accountable. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. hold you accountable. And not just, just saying the things that you want to hear or whatever. Exactly. No, dealing in truth. Right. And always in love. Exactly. Mm -hmm. and, and, and once you, once the, the two of you, the husband and the wife come together and they repent and they seek the Lord and make it closer together, your marriage will be so much better this time around than it was when you first got married. Mm 
You see what I'm saying? Because God has done a new thing mm -hmm. in marriage, in each of you, you know, with your relationship with each other, and then your relationship with him. Mm -hmm. That way you can, go, you can go strongly in the work of the Lord that he has for you. But you can't do it if one still wants to be out there running and the other one will be saved, sanctified, and filled with the Holy Ghost. Right. That's the vision. So they both come together and they both repent and they pray and they seek the problem that's going on in the marriage. They seek the answer and God will bless them and God will raise them up to be the godly man and woman that he ordained for you to be. Amen. Yes. I think you, you have been answering You've been dropping them nuggets throughout because I know my, my last question for you was going to be what has to happen in order for healing and restoration to take place oh, yeah. if God is telling you that this is where you're supposed to be. You know, yeah. the difference because there are situations that you are not supposed to be in. So we're not speaking to you, telling you that it don't matter, you stay. Right. Um, yeah, no, because I mean, I said that earlier, you know, I got released from it, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. so, but that came only from obedience, mm -hmm. you know, so, and Ma answered it, you know, you both have to want it, you yeah, both yeah. have to seek God, you have to be serious about it, you have to be relentless with your prayers and your crying out to him yes. and coming together. Exactly. that's the only way exactly and then you, you never know by you praying over that unsaved husband or unsaved wife and they don't know you're praying for them and one day they just say i'm tired of, i can't take them i don't like it you know that, that will change them because the word of the lord say uh, uh 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 let the godly one in the house pray for the ungodly one right mm -hmm. look you know the lord that don't mean that He's not talking about if you're in an abusive, abusive, physically abusive marriage and they're beating up on you and breaking your bones and all this stuff, or even mentally where they call you everything right. but a child of God, because that's even worse because your bones will heal, but the words they put in your mind won't heal. Mm -hmm. yeah, or is it don't. in the flesh? You, you will remember them, but you can get delivered from them by praying to God and asking him to let the mind in you be as in the mind of Christ. Yeah, yeah because God's not asking nobody to be a doormat. That's right. That's right. Not Physically, at all. Mentally, spiritually, or nothing. No. He right. made us, He made us for his pleasure. Our job on this earth is to please God, not man. And mm -hmm. man don't always want you to do what God wants you to do. He wants you to do it the way that he wants you to do it, to please him. I'm not mm -hmm. here to please I'm not here to please you. I'm sorry. I ain't sorry that I'm not pleasing you, but I'm sorry that you think that I should please you. Because yeah, that ain't I know, I know that's right. Mm -mm. I would just, I just um before because we are about to uh wrap things up. Um I true uh wait a minute. Danielle said, forgive wait a minute. I gotta make sure I see it all. Forgiveness is hard, but I think forgetting would be even harder. Should you forget? I know you shouldn't throw the past in someone's face, but should that infidelity be something you forget? You're not going to ever no. forget it. No. <laughs> you know, <laughs> yeah. you can't forget. You can't forget, but you can forgive. Right. And walking in forgiveness. Why forgive? Because God said, if you cannot forgive man, then he cannot forgive you. And we want to be forgiven by God because we want to go to heaven. Right? I don't right. know nobody that don't want to go to heaven because he said, he said unforgiveness is not welcome in heaven. So mm -hmm. therefore, what's, what's got to happen? You got to forgive them. Don't mean that you got to be their buddy buddies and lubby lubbies and all over. No, you forgive them. If they need you for something. Sure. Okay. No problem. But you can't keep bringing it up. You can't keep bringing it up because, because that's not forgiveness. No, yeah. you'll never forget. 
Yeah, that reminds me. Wait a minute, because that I was I, I that was something that I was going to say, but then Ha said it himself. Um, if you keep throwing it in their faces, then there's no point in staying. But I was going to say, if you keep bringing it up and throwing it in their face, then you haven't really forgiven. Yeah, exactly. well, that's what I was going to say. But forgiveness isn't going to happen overnight. No, you know, oh. you you have to continue every time that thing rises up from your bowels you're going to have to go in your prayer closet yeah. and lord help me help me help me you're going to have to cry out and you're going to have to forgive over and over and over again until one day you realize that that thing isn't sitting on your back anymore exactly. you know it's not coming up you know, every time, you know, you two have a disagreement about something, well, you cheated, you know, so, yep. but it's, it's, a yep. it, it takes time and it's going to have to be done over and over. You're not going to just say, okay, I forgive you. And then that's it. No, it's going to come up again. You just mm -hmm. have to continue to pray and, and, and okay. I'm at this point, I'm praying. I forgive them again. You know, mm -hmm. it came up again. I'm praying. I forgive them again. And one day that thing going to take root and you're mm -hmm. going to be all right. Exactly. Exactly. Because because the Bible says also that um, the one of the Pharisees of Strauss asked Jesus, how many times must I forgive my brother, the enemy that whoever did the problem? How many times? Seven times? Seven. And he said, mm -hmm. no, 70 times seven. So, you know, see, by the time you get to forgiveness 49 you be the for God <laughs> you know but he said no because if you can't forgive them how can I forgive you mm -hmm. because you know I made the both for you and if I can forgive him remember the thief on the cross mm -hmm. he forgave me he said today you're with me in paradise yes. so if we want to go and be with him we got to ask for forgiveness. It's for your benefit. It's not for that person's benefit. Because, mm -hmm. you know, 99 times out of 100, that person that did wrong to you, going on about their business, ain't thinking about you, and you sitting at your home, in your house, moaning and groaning and upset because he did this or she did that to you 10 years ago, you know, five years ago, and they going on about their business, mm -hmm. ain't thinking about you. So you're hurting yourself. And then what that caused? That caused ulcers and all kinds of physical disease. That's why a lot of people are sick because mm -hmm. they can't forgive. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I also want to Unforgiveness is a sin. Yes, dear. The importance of effective communication. Mm -hmm. Not, you know, if something is going on or you're feeling a certain type of way, and I know I've had this when Jesse and I were dating, I had, uh, I had stated the whole thing of, you know, if there is ever, uh, uh, you know, a time in which you feel as though I'm, you know, not doing what it is that you need me to do or feel as though I should be doing or, you know, you feel as though I'm treating you a certain type of way, whatever, whatever the situation is, if you're feeling a different type of way for me, that you did previously, then c let's speak about it. But you know, mm -hmm. I'm real big on communication anyway. So I'm mm -hmm. like, we should be talking on a regular basis anyway. Yep. But if that's not happening, make sure that whoever you are, that you are in effectively communicating with your, your, your mate. And mm -hmm. you, know, you have to not just hear with your ears, but also hear with your heart. You know, sometimes True. people, you know, say, yeah, I hear you. I'm like, but did you, you know, you may be listening, but did you actually hear what I said? And, you know, mm -hmm. and it's important to sit and truly try to understand what your spouse is talking to you about. Because mm -hmm. if someone is constantly telling you, you know, I feel as though you don't love me or I feel as though you're not giving me attention or I feel as though you're distant and they're saying these things and you're brushing it off. Mm -hmm. They're, they're giving you those flags. Like I'm feeling this way. And you're just like, Oh, you know, it's in your head. I find, I love you. It's good. We fine. Yep. Mm -hmm. That person is speaking. And then next thing you know, when they're 
backing up and saying, you know what? You can't say it came out of left field. That's right. They've been talking to you and telling you, hey, I need this. I want this. I feel this. But you you listened to what they said, but you didn't really hear what they said. Because if you really heard and you really took it in into your heart, you would be like, wait a minute, pause. Mm -hmm. All right, let's sit down and talk about this. And let's try to work on this. And like we said, dating each other, all mm -hmm. of those things, they are important, but you have yeah. to make sure that you are communicating because yeah. your spouse is not going, or even if you just dating somebody, that person is not a mind reader. I don't care how much we want people to be. Exactly. If you're not telling them what it is that you feel, then they're not going to know. You can't assume, well, they should, they've been around me long enough. They should know. Mm -hmm. In a perfect world, yes, uh, God knows all. No, the people yes. that are right in God. Yes. So God is the only one that has that ability to know what it is that we think it before mm -hmm. we even think it. Mm -hmm. so that's why those check-ins. Yes. Yeah, that's why those check-ins are key. You have to have them. Mm -hmm. You have to have them. Exactly. Exactly. Yep. That is that the truth. Deja said, listen to understand, not to respond. Uh, Crystal said, get them three, six, three to six month check-ins to see how everything is going in your marriage and relationship um, to see if you and your spouse are on the same page. Yes, those check-ins are so important. Amen. Because you be walking around thinking everything is good and your mate is seething on the inside. Well, like Dana says, giving you flags that I'm not okay, we're not okay, and you're walking around, you know, with rose colored glasses on. Yep. And very yeah. similar to what happened to the couple in our story, Broken Marriage. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Oh, yeah. And, and that be, being silent is just as bad, if not worse, I think it's a little worse than you communicating, you know, because if you, if, if your mate just comes in and may greet you, hi, how you doing? Or something like that. And then they may come in or she may come in and don't greet you at all. And just go on mm -hmm. in the room, do what she got to do, come back out. Or he go in the room, do what he got to do and come on back out, eat his dinner. She eat up dinner and then you're going on about your business, you know, not talking, like you said, communicating. And then you get tired. You want, after you haven't been with your mate all day, you would like to hear how their day is going. Mm -hmm. you, you, you'd like to know what happened today. Sometimes things happen to your spouse that they had a bad day. You know what I'm saying? And, uh, and they're coming home and they're acting, they're not acting the way that they normally act, but they won't express to you what happened. That makes it bad. That makes it worse. Because you because you won't understand because they won't let you in. And yeah. So you must communicate. Gotta do better. Gotta yeah. do better. And it okay. doesn't matter, it doesn't matter how long you've been married. My husband and I be married 50 years next, next, next June. Mm -hmm. But even in that, you still have to check in with one another. Just because you've been together for 50 years doesn't mean that, oh, we've been married so long. I ain't even got to think about I know what she like. I know what he like. No. If I'm important to you, then you need to listen to me. We need to do things together, mm -hmm. right? Just because you've been married 50 years don't mean that, that the wife doesn't want the husband attention or the husband don't want the wife attention. And then uh, uh, somebody, a stranger, something, like, ooh, you look good today. We mm -hmm. born like you know, next thing you know, that'll caught your eye, right? Mm -hmm. That'll caught your ear. Mm -hmm. yeah. Or who you buffed up, man. Where you, you just came from the gym. You, you look sharp. Yeah, I mean, because you look at the fact that you aren't the same person you were 50, almost 50 years ago. Yeah. You're not the same person. So in your, in your walk, in your relationship with one another, you have to understand that as the seasons change, so do you. 
you grow exactly you know, or whatever you know the things that you like when y'all were first dating maybe mm -hmm. as you grow those things fall off and you no longer like those things that's so right you have to relearn you have to you know you have to learn one another constantly you constantly. Can't just assume that like you said oh you know i've been with you so long i know you you might be and it could be something as simple as getting like they did a, a spoof on snl a while ago where every woman was getting the same pandora bracelet and you know the guy because of the fact that the wife loved it the first time then it was like oh every year this is what i'm going to do you know mm -hmm. i'm gonna do this and it, she's like I, I want more than that, you know, and I'm just using that as a simple analogy, but you can't just assume that be, what worked 10 yeah. years ago, five years it's ago, it's going to work now, ago, is going to work currently. So you, because you're not working at it, because you're not the same person you were when you were, you know, 20, and when you get right. to be 30, you're not the same person. Your that's thoughts right. aren't always the same. When you turn 40, you know, you you are always evolving. Evolving. So growing. in order to know your mate, you have to communicate. You have to spend yeah. time together. You have to have those check-ins. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and, and every age group, like you said, there's always something new, something different. You're going to experience something in your 20s that you didn't experience in your teens. Mm -hmm. You're going to experience in life in your 30s and 40s that you didn't experience in your 20s you see yeah you get older and older but you got to know how to come together if you're still married you're still together you got to come together in knowing that god got your back knowing that he kept you all these many years you've been trusting him you've been walking in in his love you've been walking with him and he's keeping you and he keeps you so that you can be an example to others. Mm. When my husband and I, we go out, you know, if it ain't no more than Tabana, and we get out the vehicle or whatever, he, he comes around, open up the door for me, and we'll go in and start holding hands, holding hands. And we were at a service one time, and, <laughs> and this married couple, they had been married for a while, and we came out the church holding hands, walking to the truck, because that's what we do, right? And the couple was so moved by that till they they began to come to our church our church because they said they had never seen that before how at our age that we're still walking around holding hands and and loving on each other well that's the way you're supposed mm -hmm. to be if you yeah. are in heart so that people can see the jesus in you amen mm -hmm. Oh, I know my pop be uh, chasing you around. No, we not going there. <laughs> I <done> told Dana. <laughs> Look, it wouldn't be me if I ain't say something. So I, I, I know what you're mm -hmm. but Yes, but it is. Uh, right, waiting for the lie to be over now. Uh -huh. Look. <laughs> like, Come on in here, girl. Like, I've been waiting patiently. <laughs> But yeah, oh, okay. Rodney said, let me not open the door. Yeah, Jesse the same way. Um, I, I sit know this and I'm mad when I'm in the car by myself and have to open up my own car door. I feel, I'm like, what is this? Yeah. Exactly. I, exactly. So that when I go out now and I go with some ladies, you know, like the other day, we had the lady day out and I was sitting in the truck. Then I got out the truck. Oh, yeah. I'm I, like, I got I'm like oops. Yeah, oh, like, that's funny because Day and I do that a lot when we're out together. We'll both get to a door and stop, like yes. looking at each other, like, "Well, who's gonna open the door?" Because I'm not used to opening up the door myself. Exactly. <laughs> and then people be looking at us. We both literally will get to the door and stop. And I'm looking at her, and she's looking at me. I'm like, "Well, I like it. Yeah. I'm older. You need to open the door for your mother." <laughs> She's oh, like, well, I'm not used to opening doors. <laughs> I'm like, and don't let somebody be in the car with us and they on my side or whatever. But when we get out, he like open up her door. Like you, I'm like, yes, please open up my door. I'm not supposed to touch this. Yes. <laughs> but the all of that stuff is 
keep and then that's another thing too and we really got to go but that's another we do. thing we do. that whole thing off of like you have to be consistent Mm-hmm. You know, that whole you know in the beginning how everybody like to whine and dine and do yeah. all these things and tell you they love you and how cute you are and this and that and maybe mm-hmm. you know pinch you on a little boom boom or something whatever <laughs> it is to let you know that you know you are the bee's knees to them and exactly. then you know, y'all get into it 10 years down the road 15 and you know you not doing them things no more. It's like, wait a minute. Then you have you might have that person that's like, now you used to be all over me. Mm-hmm. Now you're not. Mm-hmm. So what's going on? What's because problem? I'm not getting what I was getting. Mm-hmm. Exactly. So you got to be mindful of those things. And then the ladies that, you know, want to be all, uh, you know, I'm giving it to them. 24 7 whenever he asks for it, all of that good stuff and i'm cooking up a good meal and then when he say i do and then you like well i got them now and you stop no nope. you know what was told to me the way you treat them before you get them you gotta treat them after you get them yeah gotta mama keep said. it going that's what mama said yep yeah yeah now, before you get mad and you know that he's cursing you out and calling you all kinds of names that is not your name and treating you mm-hmm. why are you going to marry? Why do well, you think it's going to change after you get married? Exactly. You know I think you hit on that earlier. Mm-hmm. But if he's telling you how much he loves you and, and how beautiful you look and he's buying you this and buying you that and treating you like the queen that you are, then when you get married, you're looking for him. doesn't matter how old you get. Mm-hmm. You're still supposed to be what his queen. Now I will give my husband that 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 tap on the back for that. <laughs> he tells he does tell me every Sunday morning. Oh, you look oh you look good. You look pretty. I'm like okay, thank you. <laughs> you know, yes. Yes. Get, get, dressed, get dressed and go out. You know, he said oh, you look really nice today. I said well thank you. But mm-hmm. on some on some occasions he forget to say. It. I'm in a bad mood. He don't know it. He don't know it. He might know it now because I'm sitting in the And look, the very, the very time, the very time he don't tell me, then I go to the church stuff and somebody say, oh, you look good today. I'm like, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I know. Be yeah. like, uh-huh, thank you. <laughs> thank you. Glad yes. somebody noticed. Right? <laughs> Mm-hmm. Oh my god! Oh my god! Y'all, y'all get me in trouble. I'm getting off uh-huh. for this. Thing. <laughs> then, 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 my, then my man just came in and said, "You look beautiful, baby." <laughs> <laughs> I know that's right. <laughs> oh my god! Praise God! Hallelujah! But it has been a a true um awesome evening. I hope that everybody that has been listening i pray that you got some nuggets out of what has been stated yes that we have helped you in in some form or fashion um Mm -hmm. ma ma thank you yes thank you this was our our first time having you on live with us and we yes. know that this will not be our last um, okay. yes so we truly appreciate you being our special guest this evening yes and, and again we appreciate all of you all for tuning in tonight <laughs> Haas is still look here he go again <laughs> here he go again I can't he say, I still say he should not have apologized. <laughs> okay, we pick that up next time. <laughs> yes. And look, next time, Oz, we're going to have to have you on with us, sir, so that you can yes. get on the yes. back, okay? And, and come from, from and that. And yes. he was being obedient to the Lord. Yes. Yes. He was you being, the that. husband was being obedient. He understood <laughs> the assignment. That's right. That's right. That's right. I'm gonna I'm gonna give y'all this last example because I'm sorry, your 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 I'm sorry before you say it, your big boy said he agrees with Haas. 
the man should not have I, apologized. I, I, I will have a talk with him, okay? So, <laughs> I, I don't know about that. <laughs> Ooh, oh, you in trouble now. <laughs> Paul said he guessed. If you saying it was obedient, he guessed. It is. They in their feelings. We're going to have to have a special segment for the fellas. Yes. Yeah, I see. Let me tell him how, how important forgiveness, which we told him how important forgiveness is, but I was in the situation that I wasn't the one that stepped out, okay? But God, in order for me to walk in the ministry that God called me to, I had to apologize to my mate and to the other woman. And you chew on that. What you not um, meant to do is leave on that right there. That That's something to think about. Yeah. So that's part two, I guess. Yeah, I'm gonna say that, that's <laughs> definitely part two. But you can't drop that at the end. Yeah, that we have to pick that yeah, back up. I'm like, huh? Like, I know, but hey, Scooby Doo, huh? Because, that's because you gotta have the greater love for God than mankind. We'll discuss it. Yeah, we, I mean, I so, we have. I mean, so, we have so, stay tuned for part two. Then stay tuned <laughs> for part two. Yes. Look, what Crystal just said is part two tomorrow. <laughs> no, y'all be on the plane tomorrow. <laughs> yeah, ba I'm, I'm sorry, Crystal, baby. We are, you know, we are headed out. Sorry, that ain't gonna happen, baby. Yeah, but we, we'll, we'll, we'll let you guys know. We will. Yes. Oh, Danielle said y'all not gonna put Haas on here. We said we uh basically we gonna have to be censored. We, <laughs> we we know that we know that. But I do want to say again, thank you to everyone for tuning in and truly making this an uh, interactive experience. We truly thank you for it. But I also want to let you know that the second episode of Scenes from the which is titled, I Tell You the Truth. Okay. Today, you will be with me in paradise. It's dropping on Wednesday, this yes. Wednesday. Uh, and this particular story is dealing with loneliness. So, uh, and it's about, you know, looking for love in all, all the wrong the places. Wrong places. <laughs> uh, so if you out there are single and wondering why you haven't found your mate and possibly looking for love in all the wrong places, Wednesday's episode is for you. And if you aren't that person, but you know somebody that is that person, mm -hmm. please mm -hmm. share the episode with them and tell mm -hmm. them that they need to, to listen to it. So yeah. make sure as always that you are following us on social media and through the podcast app. And I just want to, um, Mom, we are, I am gonna ask you to close us out, but Debbie, I just wanted to say, is there anything that you would like to say before Mom closes us out? Um, no, just echoing a great big thank you to everyone that tuned in. You made it an enjoyable and successful first live dealing with you know, um, scenes from life. There will be others coming. So please continue to stay tuned. We will let you know when our le next live show will take place and which episode we will be discussing. So thank you for your support, your love, your encouragement. We can't do this without you. So thanks, 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 thanks. Okay, real quick before my pray. All of y'all talk about where we going, got Wi-Fi, stop it. We are <laughs> going to go live while we are right. away, okay? No. I'm sorry. We're glad that you enjoyed it that much, but another one will be coming. <laughs> it won't be tomorrow, okay? So just hold yes. your hope. Yes, but to God be the glory for what he's doing in this ministry yeah. Um, we consider it a privilege and an honor to be used by him as vessels. So continue to pray for us. Keep us prayed mm -hmm. up 
and we'll just continue to give you what God gives us. So again, we thank you. Amen. 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 Mom. Well, first, I'd just like to say thank you to my beautiful daughters for inviting me to be your guests. And I pray that I've done you well, as well as God, <laughs> and that someone got blessed from this episode, this, this, this answering and question period time, because mm -hmm. we are living in serious times now. And we laugh and we joke, but that's what it's about, because you, after you have such a serious, deep talk like that, you need to just release it. Yes. Release it. It's feel good now because mm -hmm. somebody's listening. Somebody hears you, you know, so you're not out there by yourself. So with that said, I'm going to wish you all a wonderful, safe trip. Have a wonderful you. rest of the day. Amen. Because you, you all need it. Yes. But I'm, sorry, <laughs> but I'm sorry that I'm staying behind this time. <laughs> I'm just joking. We're going to go ahead and pray. I'm going to get off here. <laughs> Father, in the name of Jesus, thank you right now. Hallelujah for what was done that you ordained for us to do, Father God. We yes. pray that every word that we gave out was anointed by you and was sent by you that it yes. helps somebody tonight to deal with marital situations in their lives that they can't deal with. Father, we thank you right now. Yes. Lord, yes. God, someone has stopped thinking about getting a divorce and now is thinking about coming to you in prayer and seeking godly yes. advice their marriage situation. God, for we know there's nothing too hard for you. Yes. So we ask that you bless every hero, bless every marriage, bless every family, Father God, because yes. we have been attained to serve you yes. and to love you and to walk in your way and that you will keep us in perfect peace. Yes. So God, we thank you. In thank Jesus Christ's name we pray. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 Praise God. Praise God. Thank you, everybody. This yes. concludes our live show. We love you. Thank you for tuning in. Make sure you tell your friends about us. Yes. Amen. God bless you. We love okay. you. Love Bye. you. Love, love you, you guys. Bye.